So welcome to another episode of Dominic Does DIY. So we are going to continue our look at the FET. This is episode number two. And we're going to take a more detailed look at exactly how to use this FET and why the VGS is important and how we can operate it. As always, if you like the video, please click subscribe, share, make a comment. Let me know if there's something that you want to see. And as for that, let's get into it. So in order to investigate the FET, we are going to actually look at a motor driver circuit and look at a H-bridge control circuit. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now inside this circuit, just so we can examine an NMOS and a PMOS. I chose this circuit so we could see the pitfalls and the benefits of using PMOSs and NMOSs in an H-bridge. And it'll also demonstrate the difference between the NMOS and the PMOS and when and how you can control them. In the standard H-bridge formation, what we have is a motor, a low side fence, and the high side fence. So in this circuit, I went ahead and pulled all the gates to ground. This will shut off the low side fence because they're an NMOS, so the VGS will be zero. And it will turn on the high side fence because those are PMOSs. So if we take the gate to ground, now our VGS will absolutely be uh, greater than what, what it needs to be to turn on. In order to make this thing work, so an H bridge, <clears throat> so an H bridge operates in the form. So an H bridge, the reason you would use an H bridge is because you want to run a motor in two directions. So if you run current in this direction, then the motor will be going in forward. But if you move the current in the other direction, then the motor will be running in reverse. So then how do we do this? Well, we just have to turn the FETs on to get the direction that we want. So in most H-bridge formations for DC brush motors, what you'll do is you'll turn the high side and the low side FET on. And then if you wanted to PD PWM it, you would then PWM the high side FET. For this example, I just went ahead and looked up a general brushed motor and I found a C34 L80. And so if we look at the spec sheets on that, I went ahead and just took all the specs and laid them out inside this spreadsheet. But the things that we want to take a look at for our simulation is right here, the total resistance and the total inductance. And so you can see right there, I put the inductance for the motor and the resistance for the motor. This other area with the voltage sources, the V9, this is our back EMF that the motor produces when it's operating. And V6 is kind of a dummy variable in order to calculate the back EMF of the motor. So this I uh, simulate pretty well to the motor that was specced out. So since we know this is an H bridge, we're going to simplify it a little bit to understand how the PMOS and the NMOS work between a microcontroller and some higher voltage motors. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and get rid of these guys. So basically just making it into one leg of the system. So now, so this motor will only go in one direction. And this is our current flow. When I turn these on, then we're golden. When I turn them off, they're off. So here we have <clears throat> this one half of the H bridge. And remember, we're going to be working, like in the real world, we'll be controlling this with a microcontroller. So how do the PMOSs and NMOSs work? Remember when the NMOSs work? 
That means our VGS is greater than the threshold voltage. And a PMOS will turn on when our VGS is less than our threshold voltage. So for this one, the PMOS M1, its VGS threshold is minus two volts. And the NMOS M7, its VGS threshold is 1.5 volts. So, so long as our L1 is greater than 1.5 volts, M7 will be on. And so long as our VGS is less than minus two volts, then we should be good. It, working with NMOSes is a little easier because you can just say the gate voltage because usually the source is tied to ground. So your gate voltage is your VGS. Where with PMOSes, it's a little more complicated because your gate is not necessarily equal to your VGS, right? Because your S is actually going to be tied to your high side. So your VGS is dependent on the math. So with PMOSes, you usually have to use the term VGS. But with an NMOS, you can just say gate voltage. So now we can see I've tied the L1 to 5 volts. And our H1 is going to come from our pulse. So how are we going to pulse it? We are going to start with 5 volts. That's going to be our initial voltage. Why 5 volts? Because that will turn it off. All right, so we'll start with an off motor. Uh, why is it off? Because our motor is 5 volts. We're supplying five volts to the gate, so our VGS, five minus five equals zero. So our VGS is zero, which is greater than our threshold of minus two. So our PMOS will be off. And then we will turn it on by setting the gate to zero. So zero, so VGS, gate zero, source is five volts. So zero minus five is minus five. Minus five volts is less than is less than minus two volts. So since our VGS is less than our threshold voltage, then that means that the PMOS M1 will turn on. We will wait one millisecond before we turn it on. And we will turn it on for 20 milliseconds for a period of 20 milliseconds. So 50% duty cycle. So let's go ahead and run this. So here we can see the PMOS, when the PMOS is at 5 volts, our output current is 0. And when our PMOS goes, our gate goes to 0 volts, our output current goes to 3 amps. And then as soon as it comes back up to 5 volts, as soon as our gate comes back up to 5 volts, then our current goes to 0. And we have this feedback right here because of that back EMF that you're seeing, because current cannot instantaneously change. I don't have a recirculating diode into the circuit. Let's go ahead and fix that. So what's happening is so long as both FETs are on, I can have current flow from the main voltage source through M1, through the, through the motor, out M7, and to ground through the current sense resistor. But as soon as I close, as soon as I turn off M1, L3 still wants to have current flowing through it. It wants to dissipate that energy somehow. And so because it can't, because it doesn't have a complete circuit, and the only way it can get to that circuit is through the body diode of M1. It's trying to process that information. And so you end up with that negative current spike because of it. But as soon as I throw in this recirculating diode, as soon as I turn M1 off, the current will continue to th flow through L3. It'll now become the energy source. And it'll go through R19, H3, V12, M7. But now instead of going through the current sense resistor to ground, what it's going to do is it's going to go to D1 to find the ground of the new system. As soon as we shut M1 off, this backside of L3 became the new ground 
for this system. And so with the what the recirculating diode does is it allows that current to flow back into the inductor so it can dissipate upon itself. Then let's take a look at this. Let's run this and we will see that that negative spike of current disappears. So you can see here that that negative current pulse disappeared. Normally you don't have to worry about this recirculating diode when you have a full H-bridge system because you have the body diode in the MOSFET itself that acts as this recirculating diode. So normally you don't need it in it, but since I removed half of the H-bridge, uh, I needed to reinsert that recirculating diode to remove that spike. So we've seen how the motor operates when we have a five volt motor and we're pulsing it from our microcontroller that's run by five volts. But now let's see what happens when we actually change our motor voltage. Cause this motor that I was specking out that I was looking at was actually a 24 volt motor. So let's actually feed it with the proper voltage. And we can see here, now I've got my motor voltage at 24 volts and we want to know, well, what's the current of this motor? If we just turn it on, so our L1 will just turn on. So the low side FET will be turned on. We'll pull the gate of the high side FET low. So our high side FET will be on 100%. So now we'll be able to just see what is the current that this motor takes if we just turn it on full tilt. So let's go ahead and run that. So here we can see that if we just turn this motor on, this is a 15 amp motor. So now let's see what happens if we try to pulse the motor. So now we should see if we're pulsing at a 50% duty cycle, we can expect somewhere around half this current. So if we're running 15 amps now, we should be somewhere around six, seven, eight amps, something like that during the pulse. So you can see here, we still have our five volt input coming from the microcontroller for the MOSFET. So now let's see what happens when we run it. So you can see we still have 15 amps going out. So why do we have 15 amps going out still? It's because our VGS is not able to actually turn this MOSFET off. So you can see when we're in the on position, we have five volts here, but our source is our motor voltage, our source is 24 volts. So 24 minus five, motor here is 24 volts and our gate is five. So five minus 24, is minus 19, which is less than the negative minus two to turn the MOSFET off. This microcontroller does not have the ability to turn this high side FET off, which means that we will just be on 100% of the time. So we can do this one of two ways. The first way is we just now, instead of pulsing the high side FET, we'll just go ahead and connect our pulse up to the low side FET. And so if we see when we run that, when we pulse the low side FET, we are able to get the current. But again, you can see our negative current pulse, which means we are going to have some negative voltage transients coming back because even though we have our reciprocating diode right there, it no longer is functioning as we expect it to. So if we wanna switch the low side FET to get rid of this pulse, we have to move our reciprocating diode up to this side to take the place of the MOSFET that we removed earlier. So now if we run it again, just like when we did it before with the high side FET, we will eliminate this negative current spike because we'll be able to now go through the reciprocating diode on the high side. So just like on the high side, uh, just so just like when we were PWMing the high side, we put the reciprocating diode down there and we eliminated our negative current spike. The same thing, we moved our reciprocating diode up there and it removed it. So let's just go ahead and we will put the two reciprocating diodes down there. So now what's the other option? Well, the other option is we continue to pulse the high side fat. Keep the low set the low side FET on, we'll go back to pulsing the high side FET. But now the thing is, is we gotta get our gate voltage up high enough to actually be able to turn 
this PMOS off, the high side fed off. The only way we can turn it off is we got to get our voltage from five volts. We got to move that voltage. up to like 24 volts. So now if we run it, now that our, our pulse is 24 volts, of course this can't come from a microcontroller, but now that we got our pulse at 24 volts, we should have be able to pulse it and it should look like we expect. So you can see now that we have our pulse at 24 volts, we're able to legitimately turn on and off that high side FET to be able to pulse the current through it. So then why is it that we want to be able to pulse it? Why are we pulsing this uh, circuit? Well, it's because we want to be able to control the current going through this motor for one reason or another. So we can see here that when we pulse at a um, hundred percent duty cycle what do we get we get 15 amps going out so thank you for actually watching part one this video was actually taking longer than i thought after i got done with it all so i went ahead and split it up into two so this episode was just how does the h drive motor function work i've got a part two that is going to be showing how you can take this information and kind of use it in your design work so why is it that we need the pulse and what do we use that information for? So hopefully you can check out the next video in the part two and see that also. But until then, thanks for watching and have a good day.